Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. It's the first block for our Star Bright Starlight Quilt Along. Wait, Starlight Star Bright Quilt Along. And today I'm going to make the Friendship Star. It's going to be a block just like that one, but in a different colorway. So if you want to see how to make this Friendship Star block, please stay tuned. block in the Star Light Star Bright Quilt Along series. This is a quilt sampler that was inspired by the Block A Day book. This is my second quilt that I'm going to be making with inspiration from this book. This book has 365 quilt blocks that you can choose from and I picked nine of these for our quilt along. Um, each of the blocks is going to be a star block and it's going to be a nine patch. So they're going to be simple blocks to start. And then as we go, we can learn a few more techniques and we can play around with some design choices to help us make a sampler that we really like. So I have the printable here. This is the download. It is available on my blog, so you can go and check that out. I have a copy here as I make the video. One, to show you that <laughs> that it is here. And two, I'm just double checking myself to make sure that there are no errors in the pattern. I've used, um, actually I made this practice block and I did it so that I can make this download for you. Go to my blog, you can print it out. It's only two pages um, and the block is really simple but a lot of fun. I have also um, if you watch the introduction to this quilt, you'll know that I've already drawn each of the blocks and I've colored them in two ways. In the previous video, the introduction video, I just showed the first way, but what I'm going to do is as I make my practice blocks each month, I'm going to do a second colorway. My preferred colors for the other block are going to be red and black with a gray background. So you can see that here in the friendship star that we're going to do today. For the camera, my pattern or my blocks are all going to be using blues. And so I want to show you where I'm going to pull my blue fabric from and my background fabric and then um, and we'll get started on today's quilt block. Since our friendship star block is a um, scrappy block, you don't really need big pieces of um, fabric and so you can really just kind of go through your scraps and whether or not you choose a specific colorway or you're just going to pull from lots of different colors that's fine either way will work for this um, for this quilt block and for this entire quilt um, so I don't really have a lot of little scraps I don't think so I but I did go through my scrap box to pull out some blues that I thought might work so these are what I came up with out of that. Um, I'm not sure if, I, if all of these are going to make the, the quilt. We'll see. Okay, but these are just some of my choices. I, I just pulled this because it was a neutral. We'll see. All right, here's a little bit. And for each one of those, like for each one of these, I'm just not sure. But there may be a way that, um, that they can all be used. This one is kind of a, um, a gingham, I think is what it's called. And so it has some texture. So I'm not sure how that one's going to work out. But this is like set one. I went through my scraps. Another um, thing that I have are these blues left over from my sister's pillow covers that I made her. And these are all great. And it, they give me a lot of variety for the, um, for the quilt. And they're lights and darks, which are, I think, really going to help out the, um, the overall look of the quilt. Okay, and here's a couple more. <laughs> so really, if I can get everything out of this, that would be amazing. Um, I prefer, I actually prefer to use up smaller pieces first before I pull from larger pieces. Um, so if I can get, I probably try to get as much out of here as I can before I go to larger pieces of fabric. All right. These are, um, 
I'm going to leave these out because these are what we're using for today's vlog. But I also pulled for more blues. This is that 10 inch strip pack that I got when I was in Valdosta from uh, Pinwheels Quilt, Pinwheels Quilting. And I will leave the link uh, for this fabric haul in the video. I like this um, palette one because it's already cut down to 10 inches, so I don't have to cut a large piece of fabric and press it and all that. I can just pull straight from here and get what I need and then um, put it back or cut it down into smaller strips or scraps. Um, another reason is it does match the colorway that I'm looking for, so there are lots of pretty blues. Here are a couple of um, nice neutrals, okay? And then these are actually, they're, they're kind of grayish, so if I wanted to, I could use those for my um, my practice blocks. Okay. I also had from that fabric haul a set of neutrals and I'm going to pull from these. I think I'm going to pull from these today. Okay. So they're very nice. Um, and I can just pull and I don't have to cut, I don't have to press a large piece of fabric. I can just, um, pull from this and then, um, and, and just cut what I need. Okay. Now for today's quilt, I have not picked my neutrals yet, so I'm going to pick those in just a second. Let me move all the blues out of the way. Um, for this block, let me show you. All right, so for this block, we're going to need um, a center square. We're going to need squares for half square triangles. And these are dark and then one background and then solid squares on the outside are a different background so I get to pull four fabrics today so let's do that and then we'll get everything cut and start sewing for today's block I'm choosing a dark blue for the center square here okay I'm going to choose this light blue for the um, the half square triangles. And then I'm just going to randomly choose two of these. They just have to have a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to pull this one here. And you probably can't even see it super well on camera. It's a little tone on tone. I'm holding it close, hoping, hoping you can see it. And then, uh, so this will be the one for the half square triangles. And then I'm going to pull the one right next to it for the corner squares. And it has little stars on it, so it's really cute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press all four of these fabrics. And I'll come back so I can show you the cutting. I'll be right back. Before I start cutting, let me show you all of the tools that I'm going to be using today for my cutting. And for the block in general, I have my um, cutting mat. I'm using my 16 by 24 or my 18 by 24 inch uh, cutting mat. I have my rotary cutter. I put a fresh blade in today um, because as I was cutting the jewelry box quilt, um, I could tell that the blade was going down, so I needed to get a fresh one. I'm also going to use my Shape Cut Plus ruler to cut the pieces for my block upside down okay and then I'm gonna use my um, I'm gonna use a six and a half inch square ruler to um, to do my squaring up the block the pieces of this block are gonna be five and a half inches and this block is just I mean this ruler is just a little bit bigger than that so it's gonna make it easy I have a smaller ruler here um, and this one is just to draw my diagonal lines on the back of some of my squares it's not going to be used to actually do any cutting. Well, it could be used to cut um, after to cut the half square triangle. So, but we'll get there. Okay. Now, in the pattern, let me show you here. In the pattern, there is a cutting guide, and it has um, fabric one, fabric two, fabric three, and fabric four. And it tells what each one of those fabrics is and how many squares you need or how many pieces. You need for each unit now I have gone ahead and put my fabric in that order so that it'll be easier for me as I'm cutting I would encourage you to do the same thing so that you won't accidentally cut something wrong okay so for fabric one that's gonna be our solid background squares which are these 
four corners. I'm gonna need four five and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna take my, my fabric here, and this is a width of fabric 10 inch strip. And you can do this however you want. My, um, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is this fabric is called Seeing Stars for Moda. It's a base, it's a grunge, and I want the selvage, so I wanna keep it. So I'm gonna cut off the selvage first. And then I'm gonna cut my other pieces off. Um, and this this really has nothing to do with the block. It's just something I want to do because I like this cute fabric, and I like the uh, I like the selvage of it. Okay, so that's cut off, and I'll put that with my selvages. Now I'm gonna put this um, fabric selvage to selvage. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm making a sampler quilt and I might wanna use this background again, I'm gonna cut a strip of five, five and a half inches and then I'll cut off the squares that I need. So here we go. Actually, I'm gonna cut, um, I think I'm gonna cut it all, I'm gonna, oh, I can't talk. I'm gonna cut my whole strip into five and a half inches. I think that's gonna help. Five and a half inch squares, that's what I mean. Okay, so I'm lining up my, my ruler here to get the cuts that I need. Let me see, let me go this way. Okay. I'm just putting this sort of straight on my mat so it'll make more sense when I'm trying to cut it. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut a five and a half inch strip. Okay, five and a half inches. And this is really simple with my shape cut ruler. Okay, and now I'm, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make another cut on this. I'll tell you what it is in just a minute. Okay, so here we go. So this is my five and a half inch strip. And so I'm gonna just turn this and with my same ruler, I'm going to cut some five and a half inch squares. So let's see. Oh, I can only get one round of five and a half inches. So let's see. Five and a half. Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to cut five inch squares. So let's see. All right, so this, these are my five and a half inch squares and I need four of those. One, two, three, four, and I have those. And this I'm gonna cut into a five inch square and I'm gonna put it with my five inch, um, my five inch square that I already have. I have a box with just five inch squares in it. So I'm just gonna put these in there. Okay, and so when I'm using these 10 inch pieces, I can, I'll just go ahead and get whatever I can get out of them. Now this strip that I cut, this is actually a two and a half inch strip and I have places for two and a half inch strips. This is just an extra strip that I'm gonna put with my light strings. So everything gets used and I only have this much left over. Okay, now for the next piece, I'm going, I need, let's see, it is the dark half square triangle and I need two six inch squares. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Just fold it down here. Okay. And I, th oh, I won't be able to get that all out of here either but I'll get my two six inch squares. And then the rest of it, I'm just gonna cut it down and get what I can get out of it. But I think I'll do, I'll, I'll just cut my six inch squares on camera and then do the rest of it off camera. Okay. But I'm gonna keep it right here 
and get everything cut before I do the next step. So from here, two six inch squares. Okay. And then this is just extra. And then from my fabric three, that's my light half square triangle fabric. Again, I need two six inch squares. And on the um, on your download, it does have the colors so that you can follow the diagram and see what color it is. So on this one, it says light um, half square triangle fabric and then six in, two six inch squares, and then it says light gray. So you'll know where that is in the, in the block, and you can see where to match your fabrics up with that. Okay, so here we go. Again, line up selvage to selvage. I'm gonna cut one six inch strip and then get as many six inch squares as I can get out of it. doesn't quite feel right so let me double check it it's kind of warped a little bit and these little um they're, they're not cut perfectly but they're close enough I can get what I need out of them okay so here we go so six inches Oh, I should have cut the other two and a half. I'm just going to wait. Oh, it didn't cut all the way. It doesn't matter because I don't need... Oh, this one didn't cut all the way either. Okay. So now I'm going to get my two squares out of here. one I was able to get four six inch squares but I only need two so I'm gonna take out the two that I need and I'm gonna put the other ones in a separate stack so that if I need uh, more six inch squares for a different block I'll have them and then that's some more stuff to cut off a of camera okay and then for the last one the contrasting center square I only need one five and a half inch square and so I'm going to just, I'll just pull a five and a half inch strip. Actually, I'm not. Out of this one, I'm just going to cut off what I need. I think. I think that's going to be the best course of action. But it, I mean, ultimately it doesn't matter. That's just what I'm choosing to do right now. So let's see. Five and a half. Okay. And then I'm going to cut the square out. Okay. So now that I have all the pieces cut, it's time to get ready to sew. So, but before I do that off camera, I'm gonna cut the rest of the fabric up and put it away and then I'll come back. I've moved everything over to my sewing table so that I can start uh, getting ready to sew. And I brought my, uh, my download too so I can follow along and make sure it's right. Okay, so the first thing that it says to do is set aside the five and a half inch square. So I'm just gonna take these smaller squares 
and move them out of the way. I don't need those right now. Okay, and then I'm going to take my light five inch squares and then I'm gonna draw a line from corner to corner on the wrong side of the, um, of the square. And that's why I have this ruler here. I'm just going to set it on each corner and then I'm going to draw a diagonal line. There are lots of ways to make half square triangles. For me, this way is the, the quick and dirty way. Um, it's not too complicated. You don't really have to think about it. You can just do it and it works out just fine. Um, if you wanted to change the size of your half square triangles, you just cut your original squares one inch bigger than the, the finished size in the quilt. So these are gonna be five inch um, half square triangles once they're in the quilt. So I cut them originally at six inches. Okay, so hopefully that will help you. Just a little pro tip. Okay, so I've drawn a, that line on each on the back side of each of the, um, of the background squares. And then I'm going to take each one of the dark squares and I'm going to put it right sides together with one of these light squares. Okay, so you can see that here and I'm also going to do it here. And then I'm going to, on my sewing machine, stitch a quarter inch seam on either side of that line. So a little bit to the right of it and then a little bit to the left of it. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I will, I'll do it on camera, but I think I'm gonna speed it up for you. Um, but it's not, well maybe. The process is so simple that it's almost easier to talk through it. But once you see it, you'll, you'll know what to do. I'm chain piecing these, so that means that um, instead of cutting the thread after each one, I'm going to um, just add the next one on a little bit between them. Okay, and this is one side. All right, and then I'm gonna take it and do the other side here. I'm just gonna cut, I have my, uh, my Pellon paper leader ender here to start. And I'm just gonna go through and cut this first one off and then put it back in the machine and I'm just gonna go on the other side of that um, drawn line for both of these and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I have both of my, um, my squares that I have stitched on either side of this line here and right now my goal is to cut between these two lines. I'm gonna cut on that drawn line and you can either do it with scissors just like this or you can do it with your rotary cutter. I'm gonna do it for the sake of time with my rotary cutter. Hopefully it'll be a little faster. Well, I just have my rotary cutter. Oh, it's over here. Okay, so it would be faster if you have your rotary cutter handily available. So I'm just gonna put my ruler next to this drawn line and give it a quick cut on both of these and then I'll open it up and you can see the half square triangles and there are lots of ways lots of different rulers that you can use to square up your half square triangles some of them you don't even have to cut it apart first or I mean open it out first but the way that I do it I am going to open these out and um, the download says that you need to press to the dark side so I'm gonna open these out and I'm gonna to press toward this fabric here and that's what they're gonna look like. So um, let me press these and then I'll come back and we can square them up together. Here I have a block that has been squared up and then one that has not been squared up and you can see that it's just a little bit that was taken off. Let me show you on the download. I have them side by side here and um, this block was actually made using six and a half inch squares. So it, there's a lot of, um, there was a lot of excess fabric cut off, but on the ones with the six inch squares, there's really not. And that's why I'm glad I did a practice block first so that I could figure that out ahead of time. 
Now in order to cut this down, I'm using my six and a half inch square ruler. And one thing this has is a 45 degree line. And that's really gonna help me in my squaring up because that goes on the center seam. And so I have that center line on the center seam and then I'm making sure that I have five and a half inches on either, um, on both of the outside edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a cut on two sides. So since I'm left-handed, I'm cutting on the left first and then across the top. If you're right-handed, you would go the other way. You would do right, hand, right side first and then across the top. And then I'm gonna flip the block over completely. And then same thing, your, um, that 45 degree line is on the center. And then um, the five and a half inch lines are actually where you, they're on the same lines that you just cut. And then you just have to hold it. I have to hold it really firm. Otherwise it'll move on me and I do not want that. Okay. All right. So, and so this is all the waste that came off. And then this is all of the waste from the four blocks. Okay, so from this point, I'm going to lay everything out. I'm going to bring back the solid squares that we cut earlier and get ready to lay this block out. It is in your diagram here. Um, I just realized now that that picture is kind of small. If you feel like you need that bigger, let me know for the next video. And probably as the blocks get more complicated, they will get bigger. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay this out. It's gonna be laid out in three rows here. And so the top row, I'm gonna lay out the solid squares first. So here we go. These are the background squares and they go in each of the corners. I'm just making sure the camera can see all of this. Okay. And then the, um, the, the other solid square, it goes in the center here. Okay. And when it's time to lay out the pinwheels, there is, in order to make sure they kind of go in the right direction, I'm going to first put them all in one stack facing the same way. Okay. All right. And so for this one, the, um, the solid square is on the bottom or the, uh, the dark square is at the bottom left. Okay. Now to go to the next block, I'm going to leave that first or the next space. I'm going to leave this one here. And then I'm going to take the other three and turn them 90 degrees. And then I'm going to take two and turn them again 90 degrees. And this time just take one and turn it 90 degrees. Okay, and there's my star. I'm going to go back and check my diagram to make sure it matches. And it does. I don't, I don't know that it matters which way they go. I just know that all of them have to go the same way. Okay, like if you wanted to turn them the other way, that would be fine. You just have to turn all of them so that they're that way. All right, now from this point, I'm just gonna start sewing. Um, and I'm going to sew the top row together, then the middle row, then the bottom row. Um, I, I'll go ahead and talk about pressing seams, but I don't, and if, when I sew it on camera, I'll just speed it up, I think. Um, and the, the diagram does, the download gives you directions about the, where to press the seams. And I'm going to press toward the background squares at the top and at the bottom, and then towards the center square in the middle, because hopefully that will get rid of any bulk. I feel like we press toward the triangle, we'll get bulk where the seams meet. Um, but this way, hopefully there won't be as much bulk. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing this. Um, I think I will speed it up for you on the camera. I am using a leader ender, my um, Pellon strips to get me started. So you can watch as I sew and you can hopefully get an idea about the chain piecing. Um, so here we go, let's do it. Speeding up the video starting now.
the block is done. It's ready to, um, well, the, the rows are done. Let me show you the, the seams right quick. I did finger press them. So you can see hopefully that the top two rows are going out. But the top row is going, the seams are going out. The middle row, the seams are going in. And the bottom row, they're going out. Okay, now I'm going to sew the rows together. And, um, and then the block will be finished. I'll do that off. No, I'll do it on camera. I'll speed it up. Okay. And I will be doing a leader ender in between each row. So it may take a little bit of extra time because of that, but still super fast. So I'm speeding up the camera starting now. about it I'll show you it's like right here that one is very suspicious but I am still happy with it let me put it up on the design wall near the other one so you can kind of see the difference between the monochromatic sort of blues and then this one with a bolder contrast I still think they are wonderful wonderful blocks my favorite part is like in this one having the two different background fabrics really gives this block some movement and kind of makes it look like it's spinning or like it's about to move and the same thing here um on it when i'm right in front of it you don't really notice it but i've seen it on camera and you can really see the difference between the contrasting backgrounds so i'm happy with it it's a great start to um the starlight star bright quilt along and I hope that you will join me. I hope you will go to my blog and grab that download. It's super simple, uh, really easy to do. And I think that we can have a lot of fun making a great quilt together. If you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, please leave them in the comments below. Thumbs up this video, share it with your friends. Remember that we're going all the way to 10K by July 31st, 2022. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button right there where my picture is and uh, you can join our community. I'm so grateful for all of the su subscribers that I have right now. Thank you for your thumbs up, your comments, your questions, all of that. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!